Yeah. So I'm assuming you have had um, clients that you've coached that have emotional authority mm -hmm. and how, um, you know, so many coaches want you to just do it. You just got to, you know, rip the bandaid off. You just got to go. You got to make the decision. You got to. And so I'm thinking you being someone who's meant to make a decision in the now, for the most part, you do have that integrative circuit pretty heavily, which yeah. sometimes needs some time, but you know, you are meant to trust what that sacral response is saying in the moment. So, um, you know, you mentioned the different energy types, but I'm wondering if that learning who had emotional authority, if that was something that also. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. As you said, just to learn about the cons consistency versus inconsistency of emotions was really interesting because, you know, for me, my emotions are always shifting based on whom around what the planets are doing. So, um, and it gives me that sampling nature. So just the, even the idea that like, oh, there's some people out there that experience their emotions in a consistent way that they can learn to rely on and feel in their body has well, been huge, huge for, for my clients and for me to be able to support them, especially with emotional authority there. And it's really cool to watch. I think, again, you know, human design is probably something I never, ever would have believed in if it wasn't for me constantly over the last nine years, over 450 readings now, like seeing it work time and time and time again. And when people really learn what that wave feels like for people with an emotional authority and they learn how to feel it in their body and they they learn what that emotional clarity feels like on the other side and that they can stop and start to separate their mind and notice their mind making all sorts of meaning of the emotional highs and the emotional lows and start to separate that out and let their mind do that let the waves happen and just I'm like realize it. what's up i'm having flashbacks to when yeah. I was trying to learn all that, you know, I really was trying to learn how to deal with my emotional wave in a way. And I don't mean to cut you off, but this is just oh, such a strong great. part of my experiment, you know, and for those of you who are new to this, human design is meant to be lived as an experiment. It's not a rule book that you just follow the rules. It's like you say, oh, here's something that something says, and then let me see how that works for me. And so, but this whole idea here, so just for those who don't know my design, I have a completely open Ajna, which means I'm supposed to be, I don't know the truth. I don't need to know the truth. I hold space for all truth, right? I'm left angle cross of uncertainty, which means I'm supposed to have this, you know, and I say supposed to, words matter. I'm not supposed to, but that's how I read it. I read it as I'm supposed to um, be okay with all this ambiguity and this uncertainty, but I'm somehow supposed to make a decision from a place of clarity. And as a projector with, you know, I'm triple split. My throat is only connected to my sense of self. So I'm very much someone who has to verbally process everything, right? My daughter's like, mom, why do you narrate your whole life? I'm like, I'm just processing, right? But that's how I do things. So I would talk through my emotional wave with my open solar plex husband prior to human design. And he has a defined Ajna. And I would be like, well, I'm trying to decide if I want to do this or this. And he would right away give me his opinion of what he thought the right answer was because he's super logical. He's got that logical 1762 to the throat. Um, and I would say, but, you know, I'm not sure that that's right because this, and I tell him my reasonings. And so then he would ask more questions to the point where it now felt like I was defending one side. And in his mind, I had made up my mind that this one side was my answer because I had defended it so strongly to him. And then it would almost seem like somehow he had talked me into the opposite of what my defined will against his open will. Like I'd somehow make a decision just because I had to show him that he wasn't right. It became because that's the other thing needing to be certain. So emotional clarity was never something I knew how to do. And as I went through the human design process of waiting for it, I realized I could not, or I was best served by not talking about my emotional decisions in the beginning, because it just, oh. I was so out of sorts in it. And then realizing it wasn't something that meant just wait and think about it that whole time. And then mentally try to make this decision over the course of time, because that just creates anxiety. And that's where I was living was mental anxiety because I didn't have emotional clarity. 
Right. So, so when I learned to, to just say, huh, I don't know, this doesn't feel like a yes. So I guess for now it's a no. And then I would just wait until either time runs out and I'm like, well, it was a no because I never got a yes. Or, and that would annoy some people, but you have to let go of that, right? So I'm imagining as a coach, when you have a client who's just like, I don't know, <laughs> it could have been really annoying. Um, you mean, you mean like during our coaching process, like yeah. if, if they're trying to make a decision and they don't know? Yeah. Yeah. I think, well, thank you for sharing your experience. That's one of my most favorite things about human design is getting to listen and hear and understand other people's experience of their, how their energy moves and how they make decisions. Cause it helps me. Mm -hmm. understand how to talk about it better for the parts of the design I don't have so yeah I'd say with um yeah I'd say for clients it's one of the biggest deconditioning challenges with emotional authority it sounds like you went through a big journey a big powerful journey with that and that is because we have been trained by society to use our mind to try to figure it all out and when you have an emotional authority this brilliant genius this wisdom in the solar plexus center um you know right between two neural networks right 40,000 neurons in the heart 100 million neurons in the gut solar plexus area kind of you know in this area physiologically and in Chinese medicine too this is like where we store all our suppressed emotions so there's a lot going on there and to, to in the face of a society that's constantly pressuring clarity and and decision making and and you know rewarding people that do that it human design is a brave path and, it, and I, for anyone watching I just want to anyone on this journey, like, I just want to celebrate you for a moment because it takes bravery to, to trust that by following your wisdom, you will get rewarded in a bigger way than society. And it takes time to unravel all of those patterns that you built momentum with, with the mind, like you said, in your example, just trying to make sense of all the, of all the ways, of all the ways you're taking in other people's emotions and trying to talk it out before it's ready to be talked about. And, and um, all of the ch challenges that come with that. So yes, it's it was it's challenging for my clients with emotional authority to allow themselves to not know. And that's the biggest thing I hold space for.